Hey, what is going on, you block shaped beware? Today, we're going to be playing some games with a deck that JW, aka Flex Teddy Rushes, has called the most broken deck in standard and maybe the greatest Pokemon deck of all time. Not quite, but uh, he thinks the deck is very good. And um, just based on that, I'm willing to give it a try and see uh, what I think of it. So, this is JW's Moltres Urshifu VMAX deck um, that he says is criminally underplayed at the moment. And um, I want to see if I agree or not. I have yet to try any. Urshifu Moltres yet, but I think there definitely is some uh, something here for sure. I mean, Moltres is a very good card. Urshifu Rapid Strike, I've been saying, I think is the most powerful card in the format. Um, it's just kind of in a rough spot right now because of how much Psychic decks or how good Psychic decks are. And uh, yeah, even the best cards sometimes are not the best depending on the meta. But when you got the Moltres to back it up, that really does give you quite a bit better of a matchup spread than just kind of a straightforward Urshifu deck. And we've been kind of seeing this with the Sylveon Urshifu slash Blaziken slash other Rapid Strike Pokemon builds where, uh, I mean, Rapid Strike Urshifu is kind of a big star in those Sylveon builds when you're not up against a Psychic deck. So um, it's very clear that the card is still very, very good, um, despite, you know, Dragon Pulse and Shadow Riders and even Sylveon itself actually being popular. That can also a Psychic type that Urshifu is weak to. So those are the main attackers in here. So obviously we've got some Dark Energy. We got the Rapid Strike Energies to attack with those. There's one basic fighting. There's two Energy Search that helps us find whatever energy we need and kind of help us more aggressively find the Dark Energy for sure. Uh, and then the rest of the engine in the deck is... Kind of cool. So there's a Cricket Tune in here for a little bit of added draw support. There's the the double Crobat, of course, two Crobat. Very few decks play two Crobat anymore. Um, and I feel like maybe even one of the reasons behind the second Crobat in here is just there is four Great Balls. So you just want to be able to find it more aggressively through Great Balls sometimes. Um, but even like one early game and then one late game is something that can come up. And that's kind of where I miss Crobat and some other decks sometimes. Like I'll use one early game. Um, I don't really want two Crobat, Crobat in play early game. It'll clog down my bench. It'll be like too easy, too prize Pokemon for my opponent to chase. But at the late game, not having like a second Crobat to help you dig uh, to close out the game can be quite... Uh, I, you kind of miss it. I kind of miss it sometimes. So the two Crobat in here is interesting. I like it uh, overall. I don't know if I'm going to start adding two Crobat to every deck, but um like the idea behind it. There's the one Cricket Tune in here. Um, and that combos well, actually, with Articuno, which can thin out your hand to draw a card. And then if you thin out your hand, then it allows Cricket Tune to be able to draw more cards more aggressively. And there's also some Rotom Phones in here. Only two Rotom Phones. I kind of wish there was more Rotom Phones. If I was to change anything with this list, I think it would be to probably try and fit more Rotom Phones. Uh, if I feel like the Rotom Phones actually do enough. I don't know if actually I think the Rotom Phones do enough because I've played zero games with this deck so far. <laughs> but um, yeah, not too much more to say on the list. And I got the Passimian here and the, the site. Uh, give us a little more damage on the GMAX. Rapid Flow, the usual suspects in the supporter slots, as I always say. Marnie, Research, Boss, uh, and some Tower Floating water, Flowing Waters. I get three of them. Even though we only have this, uh, the Urshifu is the Rapid Strike Pokemon. It's kind of the best stadium to play in the deck. And we actually are, unlike most decks right now, pretty ability reliant. Besides Shadow Rider, I guess, we're pretty ability reliant. We got like the Krikatoon, the Articuno, the Triple Moltres. So we are pretty heavily reliant on our uh, our v's and v max's abilities which i feel like a lot of decks aren't these days besides shadow rider of course so um just kind of play the a decent amount of the best stadium which is just kind of tower of waters uh even though it doesn't do all, like that much for us because we only have the urshifus and i guess the Passimian as rapid strike pokemon to be able to utilize with it you just need to play like a decent count of stadiums to um to make sure you can counter like paths of the peak a decent amount of times throughout a game um but yeah that is the list let's go ahead let's get into some games and let's see what JW's on about, about this deck being criminally underplayed. By the way, go check out JW, the Twitch, the Twitter, the YouTube. Links will be in the description. Go check them out over there. Flex Daddy Righteous. Um, or going by Flex Daddy now, I think, actually. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead. Let's get into some games. All right, we're getting into our first game here. We got the Moltres start. Um, so that's fine. I mean, if we open Moltres or Urshifu, that's usually just going to be the best starter because we have at least one of our attackers out there. And then it'll depend on which one we actually want to set up. Depending on what we're playing as it looks like we're up against Dragapult. So Urshi, or not Urshi, Moltres is our go-to in this one for sure. Definitely going to want the Moltres uh, and double Mulligan to go with it. That's I that's kind of nice. <laughs> and we actually don't have to do too much with the hand, to be honest. We might just sit on this hand because it has... It's got a Counter Stadium for a Path to the Peak. We can accelerate some energy. We can get one energy on each of our Moltres here. Um, or I could put two energy on one Moltres, which actually is maybe just better... Uh, but I would probably want it on the active Moltres, to be honest. Um, I'm trying to, like, debate if it really matters. I'm going to start with a Great Ball here. Get a Crobat for the future. Uh, Great Ball again. I kind of want to, like, find... I mean, another Moltres is great. But then I almost want to go get the Articuno. I'm feeling the Articuno right here. Another thing really cool about the Articuno with the Reconstruct... I didn't mention this in the, the intro. Or was it yeah, Reconstruct? Um, 
is that I can get dark energy to the discard pile, which can sometimes be a little bit of a hassle uh, to do. So it's really nice to be able to do that. Although I don't want them to hit my Moltres that I'm going to be setting up. So they would hit it for 130, then I'd take 20, it'd be 150 on it. So maybe I do set up the bench Moltres just to kind of play around the damage I'm going to be taking. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to go about this, to be honest. I don't want to reconstruct anything out of this hand right now. We're just going to pass, but I'm just going to put it in play to have it set up. Because um, I do need to find a switch card now. Um, I think it's just like, could they build up enough damage quickly enough to kind of KO this one? I kind of want that fresh Moltres, I feel like, um, to be the first thing to kind of swing here. Um, they're setting up many a Dragapult <laughs> so far. Let's see what else they got. But yeah, we got the, like I said, Tower, Floor, wa Tower Flowing Waters, Counter the Path of the Peak. Uh, we got this phone to combo with the Articuno. So the hand's looking good. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see what they got. They still have um, to play out their turn. Uh, and we know they play Crushing Hammer. We saw that in their Mulligan. Um, so we know they play the Crushing Hammers. So we know that our energy can be removed, which is what I'm playing around a little bit here. And it's just a Genesol for 60 to the active. So they're really hoping I whiff that switch card. And let's let's find out if I do whiff that switch card. Um, I'm going to go with the energy. Do we... What? We prized four dark energy. No way. <laughs> what? That is absurd. Holy smokes. I was like, I'm gonna get a dark energy here. Thankfully it takes dark, dark colorless. Cause if it didn't, my goodness. Okay, there's the air balloon we're looking for. Now I just wanna kind of draw into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and reconstruct these two. Once again, I don't even need to use Crobat. I don't need to use the Tower of Waters. Gonna keep all that around in the hand. Um, yeah, my plan was to just like discard a dark energy and then use the Dire Flame Wings to, to get the energy into play and then maybe attach another energy here for turn. Um, but we prized <laughs> four. There's, there they, and here they come out of the prize cards. We prized four basic dark energy. Uh, by the way, I didn't mention it during the intro. Like I usually do. Go check out the Twitch stream. First link in the description or it'll be like the fourth link because I want to put JW stuff down there so the fourth link in the description check out the live stream i stream every day except tuesdays twitch.tv slash azul gg sometimes i stream another day that's not tuesdays when i'm just like you know feeling a little bit um you know bogged down and trying to keep up with everything else so i'm not streaming every day except not tuesdays um or every day except not tuesdays sometimes i just like another day where i don't stream but usually streaming every single day except tuesdays here comes a crushing hammer for my opponent yeah gets rid of my fighting energy that's also kind of an unfortunate part of this is now they can do that and get rid of my fighting energy okay so we have the reconstruct to draw one card um and that is all we have in this hand we don't really want to set up urshifu pretty much at all so i kind of just want to discard the urshifu stuff but yeah, I mean, I think I will just discard. I think I'll discard the Passimian and the Urshifu VMAX. I could bench the V to start to set it up, to be honest. I don't have to not set it up. Let's go like this to see what we get. Quick Ball is pretty good. Um, I'm going to go through, yeah, Air Balloon, Sight, Quick Ball, get ourselves a Bat, and let's see what that Bat gives us and uh, if we can work with this. Crow Bat for six. Do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> interesting hand. Uh, we got three tower. All right, pass. <laughs> so not a very good draw there. Uh, that is a drawback from this being, uh, you know, like I said, like if that was a dark energy right here, we'd be able to use dire flame wings, just like sell it back onto the Maltrace trace and then boss knock out this dragapult. Unfortunately, that is a fighting energy because we prize, <laughs> someone said prize for basic dark. We weren't able to get the dark. We had to get the fighting, could it put it in the discard pile and excel it. Um, our hand, we do have the Marnie, which is good. The bad thing here, if they've got the Crushing Hammerheads especially, uh, is we have all of our Tower of Waters on our the bottom of our deck now, which is not where we want them. We would prefer to have them on the top side of the deck. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not great. But um, as long as they don't get a Crushing hammer heads, we won't really have to use Dire Flame Wings anyways. We'll just have to find an energy to attach for turn, and that'll be fine. So we don't need to use Dire Flame Wings this turn. I would like to. I would like to get two Dark Energy into play on this turn. One to attach to the active, and one XL to a Bench Maltrace. That would be ideal. Um, and we actually are getting to the point where setting up an Urshifu wouldn't be terrible, to be honest. Because if I can set up an Urshifu, then I can go for, like, a G-Max Rapid Flow to KO Double Sobble. Or Double Drizzile, or Drizzile Sobble, or whatever, to get my last two prize cards potentially like if this turn i knock out a a dragapult v which it looks like they're gonna hit me with a dragapult v here which actually sets up pretty cleanly for them because then i'll knock myself out if i attack with a moltres which i'll probably be attacking with this turn i don't see myself not attacking with the moltres this turn 
Um, but if I attack with the Moltres this turn, then they can go, you know, they're doing 140 here, so I will knock myself out attacking into their Dragapult. Um, so yeah, setting up an Urshifu at this point wouldn't be terrible, but it looks like they are going to get out double Drizzile. Oh no, that's a Dragapult VMAX. Actually, it looks like they're VMAXing the active here, which means, you know, we'll still knock ourselves out, but we do get three prize cards. And there is that Path to the Peak that I was talking about, which is going to be really hard for us to deal with because we do have three Towers of Waters on the bottom of our deck. So as long as we get the energy here and get this knockout, I think we'll be in a pretty good spot, but we got to start there. Um, got the research, and I'm a little bit more inclined to use a research for turn. Definitely. Um, higher chance of drawing into that energy, which is such a big deal here. And we have whiffed, and we can't use any of our, our abilities. We are super ability-reliant in the current hand, and we're not going to be able to use any of them. This is looking really bad. Um gonna get an urshifu to have the option or should i grab a mo fresh moltres i'm kind of leaning towards fresh moltres here but i don't want to put it in play i don't want them to hit it and sheesh looking really bad i could have e-switched off this one i guess but that feels bad if i then get the energy so it's correct to play it the way i did i think i think we should have to pass over to my opponent yep they're gonna get this kill on the small dish we'll have zero energy in play path to the peak really slowing us down we can't re uh reconstitute it's not reconstruct i didn't fully re i couldn't fully read it reconstitute we can't reconstitute not reconstruct <laughs> we can't reconstitute we couldn't play the cricket too. We couldn't play the crowbat. There's the energy a little bit too little too late. And now they have Marnied our crowbat and our cricket to the bottom of the deck. And our only out to draw support is this great ball, but we can't find cricket or crowbat. So we have the to top deck. Oh no, we actually have this energy search. So energy search can let us shuffle our deck. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter though, because we don't have a tower of waters. Um, so we can't use those abilities anyways, because this pass of the peak is in play. Um, and gonna be very annoying for us to keep up with. So we're in a we're in a pretty bad spot here. This has gotten gotten pretty bad uh to be honest this has gotten really really bad for us um we'll see if we can hopefully make some kind of comeback but it looks like they're gonna ko the moltres this turn and the question is what do i even send up they kind of just went with a boss on the following turn to be honest they're gonna ko my active here with this i can send up uh sheesh i send up crowbat and hope they don't have boss on the following turn i could send up the Articuno, maybe I have to send up Articuno, and then they get to split, split, split out, ugh, split up the damage a little bit. Um, we do have to find like our tool scrapper to be able to remove this to move the Articuno this turn, but I don't even know if we're going to be trying to move the Articuno this turn. We're so far behind at this point. Who knows how this is going down? Um, but I guess this way they can't win with they can't win next turn. I guess with a boss. Um, because if I sent up this, they would knock this out and then put five on the crowbat, and then boss KO the crowbat, or even just like three, and then boss KO the crowbat would also work and like put three and two or whatever. Um. Yeah, Max Phantom coming down. All right. So we're really living off this top deck here. Um, yeah, we're really, really living off this top deck here. Hopefully it's good. Let's see what it is. Tower of Waters. Okay, so we can use the Energy Search. We can grab... I could grab an Energy. I think I'm not going to grab an Energy. We can put... We can then use the Great Ball, get Cricketune or Crobat. No Cricketune or Crobat. So we do still get the Moltres. So this kind of still gives us some hope here, I feel like. Um... I could reconstitute, I got it right this time, these two to draw a card. Or I could just throw this down, accelerate energy, attach energy, which I think I'm leaning towards a little bit more. Um, and then pass. <laughs> and then hope. And then hope. Here we go. Uh 80 HP, 90. This, this one has 150. I mean, quick shooting, quick shooting would be enough here, to be honest. Double quick shooting here. They KO my active and my bench monsters. All right, we're taking an L to the Dragapult. Super unfortunate, but path to the peak. Super strong against our deck. There is three stadiums in our deck. We just weren't able to find them when we needed them. And then, yeah, four dark energy being prized was really the, the real uh, killer here, I guess. Because if we had just had a dark energy instead of the basic fighting energy, um, we could have... Uh, we could have... Uh, you know, re-excelled energy that turn and then actually attacked. But unfortunately, it was a fighting energy, not a dark energy. So who knows how it would have gone, right? Most of the time, we'll have that dark energy in the deck, probably be in a fine spot. Not this time, though. Take an L in this first one. All right, getting into another one. And it looks like we've paired up against the Tricky Jim, Andrew Mahone, uh, in this one. So I'm interested to see what he's rocking. I'm going to open up the Moltres because it's a little bit less punishing to have open Moltres once we know what we're playing against than it is to open up the Urshifu, even if we have like the Tower of Waters. It looks like we're up against Wishy Washy. <laughs> so Urshifu is definitely going to be the way we go into this one. Looking for that turn two G-Max Rapid Flow. We can even get a turn one Strafe Knockout on the Wishy Washy um, before it gets too much energy on it and take advantage of that 30 HP and then follow up with oh, what it looks like they will have a Jirachi to move 
the wishy-washy. Get it out of there before it gets KO'd. Okay. Not going to be able to make that happen, but still going to look for that G-Max Rapid Flow. Take out some Frost Moth. Maybe take out the Jirachi. Maybe double Snom. Really depends on what is on the board for, uh, for Mahone on their next turn. But yeah, we got a really good hand here that has a lot of options. So the top deck... Uh, might change things up, but we do need to find some kind of draw power. We could also look to just maybe use the phone to just set up a research on Marnie on top. It depends on what this topic is. Rapid Strike Energy. I don't love the idea of losing a Rapid Strike Energy. Um, let's quick ball away the dark. <clears throat> we could go with the Cricketune here. I actually, I think I like the Cricketune here a lot. Um, we can phone and then tune for two into the Marnie. And into, well, there is the Urshifu VMAX. So I almost want to hold out on this hand. Um, but actually, we could set it up so we get the Urshifu VMAX, couldn't we? So we could like take, oh, we can only pick one to go on top. I like, I thought we could like set up our top five. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're going to set up our top five here. No, let's just get this Marnie. Let's play this Marnie and let's move on. Quick ball, don't want to get rid of a Ravage Strike Energy. Let's go with that Marnie. Uh, yeah, I was like, some reason, for some reason I thought, we, okay, we can set up our top five. The, deck, the card's not that good. <clears throat> Calm down as well. All right, draw is all right um gonna go ahead well how much damage does this thing do for each basic energy attached to this pokemon so they're probably looking around doing like 120 on the next turn uh probably not too much more than 120 i'm not worried about them doing too much more than that so i think we just dire flame wings uh with the active one and i'm not gonna worry about the bench one quite yet and then I'm going to go ahead and pass. I could have gotten, like, maybe the getting the Articuno in play. I wouldn't have used its ability quite yet. I guess I could have, though. I could have quick balled away the quick ball to get the Articuno to energy search, get a dark energy, uh, reconstitute away the Moltres V and the dark energy to get the second dark energy in this card pile for the Diaphragm Wings. But I also might just want to attach the energy here just to get that in play for the G-Max Rapid Flow, which is going to be, like I said, the main attack we want to use. Okay. Cape to the Wishy Washy. So it's going to have... Uh, a lot of hp <laughs> it's gonna have a lot actually um but that's fine we can we can deal with that i think i don't think we're too worried about having because we do play a tool scrapper so our multi just can still one hit ko the wishy-washy and i have gone down double snom but g max rapid flow can take out two snobs they're gonna need a third snom to kind of uh set us back here i think yeah there needs to be a third snom involved and if there isn't we're going we're going snom hunting on the next turn we're gonna take out a couple of snobs it's gonna be the the uh, <clears throat> the play here, whether or not we get there, of course, will remain to be seen. But that's going to be uh, what we're looking to do here is definitely go go snom hunting, try and pick up uh, some snom KOs. But we'll see what what uh, what they get if they get that third snom. Like I said, it could be could be tough, and I don't even know. And <clears throat> excuse me, there is that third snom. So now, do we go after? Two snobs. I feel like I still want to go after two snobs, and we'll get the third snob slash frost moth a little bit later. Ooh, e switch. This really sets things up really nicely to actually make sure we can G max rapid flow turn. But we could get a little bit greedier with this actually potentially. And well, because like oh my gosh. All right, let's start with. <laughs> I'm like, there's so many like thoughts going through my head right now. How I want to play this. Um, let's get rid of this because we could get greedier with the e switch, which I think is the route I want to take. Because we have a lot of switch cards in here. We have four. Um, and we want to be able to G-Max Rapid Flow back-to-back -back turns here, ideally. Um, so if we set up for that, that makes our our like, our like plays so much better, potentially. Um, so let's get this Articuno. Um, play the Energy Search. <clears throat> get the Dark Energy. Play the Great Ball. Get the V. Oh, no V-Max. Got a V. I still like the V. Still like it, but now it makes me want to go this E switch route to be a little bit more aggressive with my draw. Um, yeah, I think I want to be a little bit more aggressive with the draw for sure. And then E switch up to the Ursh Cricket for two, and then we can still Crobat for six if we have to. Tool Scrapper, I don't really want to play right yet because it would just give it a one cape and then they could replace the cape. I'm sure they're playing, you know, four cape. Because uh, you're just trying to make Big Fish is basically the name uh, of the deck, the name of the game. Um, yeah, just trying to make Big Fish. Uh, so we want to play around that. Air Balloon here. Um, I've already used the ability. I could reconstruct, but I want to keep the Tool Scrap here. So I think I'm just going to go with a Marnie here, reduce the hand size. Uh, energy Search not really necessary to play. So yeah, just go with the Marnie. <clears throat> Reduce our reduce their hand size. Draw me some new cards. I do want to find. We do play to energy switch, so we could find another energy switch 
to, to make a big play still happen here. Um, could draw a card with the get rid of two great balls because we do have the other VMAX in hand. Uh, so just like ditch those. There's no, our, our bench is also locked, so we can't really <clears throat> can't really do anything about that anyways as well. Our bench is locked here, so we can't really like do anything uh, like put Pokemon down. Like our bench is locked. <laughs> we can't do it. So we may as well just kind of get rid of these great balls. We have the second VMAX for this. Maybe I should have got rid of a quick ball and a great ball instead. Now that I'm kind of thinking about it a little bit further, maybe I should have got rid of a quick ball and a great ball instead. That might have a little bit been a, been a little bit better to be honest, but this still isn't bad, I don't think. Uh, and yeah, we're taking out snobs. We're drawing prize cards, and we're just gonna keep doing that and keep going. Um, there's a Nessa. Didn't you could have used it to get a bunch of snob, but they probably don't have a hand that works with that right now. So they need to find a little bit more than that. The wishy washies are coming out though. And now the game, the game, name of the game for them is going to be get out the Frost Moth and get as much energy in play right now as possible because there is a possibility that I KO the Frost Moth next turn. So they really just want to overload their bench with energy this turn and just get a bunch of energy in play. That way, if I do take out the Frost Moth, they still have attackers to work with uh, for future turns. <clears throat> so it really is going to be the name of the game for them. And like I said, we can we can take one hit KOs on the Wishy Washies. Um, it will take me a little bit to build up. Right now, I have zero energy in play, so it would take me a little bit to build up to that point to be honest, because we do have. <clears throat> excuse me zero energy in play so to get the one hit KOs with the aura burn not gonna be the fastest thing to do but if they don't actually get the wishy-washy to the point where it's one hit KOing anything then I can just kind of you know sit here behind even a crowbat and they can hit it for 120 and then I can move the crowbat eventually or hide behind the Articuno that has the air balloon uh and so on uh, I guess my Cricketune maybe should have got the air balloon I wasn't really thinking that fully through to be honest but Cricketune is something that I would like to send in the active to draw the extra card or even when i play escape rope set up the cricketune so i wasn't fully thinking that through the air balloon definitely should have gone on the cricketune there uh, but it looks like one wishy-washy is going to get set up for sure the question is will they get another one set up and they're actually going to try and hit a little bit harder with this one they don't need the four energy to get that group power ability cooking they don't need that they don't need all that energy to get the group power ability cooking but they're going to put the extra energy there to hit a little bit harder so they'll be hitting for you know 150 so they can actually 2 a my Urshifu with another energy attachment here. So we're going to be looking for boss, I think, is the card to look for here for us, is boss. We're going to be looking for boss, try and boss KO the Frostmoth, leave him to just one wishy-washy in play, uh, and then kind of go from there. Um, okay, so evolve. <clears throat> Ooh. Yeah, like the, the air balloon should be on the cartoon. <laughs> I like didn't fully think that through at all. I'm thinking this through, though. We're taking our time here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, how do I get the most out of this without like overextending my energy too much? Because I don't want to run out of energy. So maybe I just do want to go down to like a zero card hand here and then go from there. So let's play a great ball. Grab Passimian. I don't think we're going to be using Passimian in this matchup at all. Check. There is two boss in the deck, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for one of those boss. We want to take out this Frost Moth if we can. With the uh, Gale Thrust. Ape Rope. See what they send. They probably will send Jirachi here. Maybe the other Wishy Washy, I guess, would also be a fine send. The other Wishy Washy would be a fine send for sure. I guess a G Max Rapid Flow. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't hate to see a G Max Rapid Flow this turn, to be honest. Uh, let's get another draw. It is a research. Let's go ahead and click a tune for two. Do we get that boss? No. Four card hand. I don't want to lose my second Moltres or my last Moltres, I don't think. So I think I'm going to go with a Marnie here instead because I don't want to lose my last Moltres there. Um, did get the Tool Scrapper. Not going to make a big deal yet. Um, so we're just going to go with that Gale Thrust here. And then next turn we can accelerate an energy to our Moltres. Then we can go with that G-Max Rapid Flow. Um, KO Frostmoth and Jirachi. And then we can go Scrapper plus Aura Burn knock out this Wishy Water. It is quite the tank right now. It is quite the tank. It's got... 100 and or 230 hp um but as soon as that cape is removed it comes down to a measly 180 which aura burn quickly and easily <laughs> takes care of so um it is hitting actually this could get could this get scary could they one hit k on my active here i feel like they don't play enough energy to one hit k on my active but to be honest i have no idea what a wishy-washy deck looks like um that could be the play here <laughs> can they one hit ko my urshifu v max and they're getting quite a few water energy here they would need like what 10 of them though they would need 10 water energy uh which i guess is it's looking like it's possible there's eight there's your trading core for nine level ball for 10 is there something they can grab off level ball to get another energy um it's looking possible though which has got me 
really worried. <laughs> now I'm really scared. Uh, if we're going to be able to keep up in this one on our side now. There's a Snom. All right, all right. We do have the Scrappers. So taking 10 Water Energy out of play would be a pretty big hit back. So that would still leave us in a reasonable spot, I think. Question is, is I think they were digging for the water here off the Streamy Revelation. Did they get it is the question. Two more Snom come down. <clears throat> so now my GMAX Rabbit Flow is going to be quite a bit less powerful. But they did not get, <laughs> thankfully <clears throat> for us, did not get the, the, all the water energy. All right, so Dire Flame Wings. Um, and then I'm going to Train Court, actually. And I can use this to use GMAX Rapid Flow instead. Which I'd much rather do uh, Reconstitute, get rid of the Research and the Urshifu, I think. I want to make sure I can attack with Urshifu again. If they go boss KO my Moltres, they could go that line. Because Gale Thrust doesn't KO this uh, Wishy Washy, so... Um, yeah, a lot more snoms down, but we're not too worried about that, I don't think. G-Max, Rapid Flow, take out the Frost Maw, take out the Jirachi. Just a wishy-washy in play as a threat now. I mean, I guess these weren't really threats either. I mean, the Frost Moth, um, and they have plenty of snoms, so another Frost Moth could make its way into play. Um, but I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, we got the Moltres, we got the Tool Scrapper. Didn't want to play it yet. If I play the Tool Scrapper this turn, another cape could come down, and that could be something to have to deal with. And, uh, of course, I could boss KO a Snom at this point, and it looks like that'll be a guaranteed line I can take as my opponent plays the Bruno. So we should be able to boss or Scrapper no problem here on this next turn. <laughs> it would have been very scary. They almost had it there. The 10 energy wishy-washy almost happened. Not quite, though. A couple short. They definitely would have made things scary. We would have been able to have the response with the Moltres, but from there, who knows where the game goes. Um, but it looks like we'll be able to pull it out here in the end. Gonna do the scrapper play. Um, get rid of this cape. Don't want to see that anymore. And yeah, make sure you put, if you guys take nothing else away from this game, make sure you put, remember to put your air balloons on your Krikatoons because Krikatoon while it's in the active draws an extra card. So as long as it has free retreat to get back to the bench, you're getting plus one card a turn. And our last E-switch was prized. So that could have made things very, very awkward actually if they had gotten that KO. So thankfully they didn't. And we're still able to walk away with a dub here in the end in this one. And that's gonna do it for the games with the Urshifu Maltrace deck. I actually felt pretty good. I love the the Krikatoon. I love the the Articuno. I actually don't think the Krikatoon was in uh, JW's original build, um, but it felt really good. <laughs> the Articuno, actually, I really like that Articuno. I might try and fit that into more decks of my own because um, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool for sure. Big fan of the whole Articuno Moltres combo there. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you're new here and you're enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.